Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare the new Eero Pro 6C to the last generation Eero Pro 6. So I've done extensive reviews on both of these. I'll put those links in the description below. And while you're down there, smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support. So let's get straight into this thing. All right. So I've done speed tests in wired and wireless backhaul, and I've also done range tests. And I actually redid all my tests on the Eero Pro 6 with the same Wi-Fi devices just so it could be an apples to apples comparison. And all the environments were the same, so same place, same testing area, same distances. Well, one went further than the other. So I used my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. I also used the combination of my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And both of these are Wi-Fi 6C devices. Now, both of these give very similar numbers in terms of performance, so I just wrote down the Galaxy numbers. Well, the Pro 6C is supposed to be the newer, better version of the Pro 6. The arrow sign, the lettering on the newer Pro 6C is larger. So as its name implies, the Pro 6C now supports Wi-Fi 6E, which is the new 6 gigahertz band with 160 megahertz channel support. Now, I said a lot of things there, what does that mean? Well, to simplify it, essentially the 6 gigahertz band is a new frequency that's used for Wi-Fi systems that's much less congested and can work much faster. However, it is shorter range. The Pro 6 does not have that. However, these are both tri-band systems. So the Pro 6C has a 2.4, a 5 gigahertz, and that new 6 gigahertz that we talked about. Whereas the Pro 6 is also a tri-band, but it has a 2.4 gigahertz and two 5 gigahertz band, again, making it a tri-band. Now, the Pro 6C also has a faster speed rating of AXC 5400 versus the Pro 6, which has a speed rating of AX 4200. With the new Pro 6C, you get a 2.5 gigabit per second port and a gigabit powered by a USB-C plug, whereas with the Pro 6, you have, I mean, it pretty much looks exactly the same. However, the Pro 6 does not support 2.5 gigabit. It supports up to a gigabit. So again, these are both auto sensing. So is the same for the Pro 6E, which means you can hook up any one of these to your modem and use the other one for wired backhaul or connecting it to a switch or connecting it to a device, however you wanna use it. I do have a setup guide video on this. I'll link that down below as well. In terms of the power, they both use 27 watts. They both have the same exact, pretty much. I mean, aside from the text over here, it's exactly the same power plug. It looks the same, same size, same everything. They're both USB-C, which is fantastic. Now, one cool thing about the Eero is you do get smart home hub features. So both of these support the Zigbee and Thread. So some smart home devices require a hub. This pretty much has a built in so you can use that. I typically use smart home devices that don't require a hub. So it pretty much works with any router or mesh system. But if you did require that, these do come built in with that. Now, as far as parental controls, both of these are exactly the same. So they do not include parental controls for free. There is a subscription you need. It's called Eero Secure. It's not too expensive, but it would be nice if they included it. And then if you want more advanced features, they have Eero Secure Plus, which costs a few bucks more. However, you do get a few more features like VPN and a few other things. Let's talk about some numbers, starting with the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast your mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the mesh Wi-Fi itself can go that fast, which in my case, these both can. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And notice I said megabits per second, not megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. So there's a huge difference between those two numbers. So all the numbers I tell you guys are gonna be in megabits per second. So in both cases, when I hook up my computer via ethernet to each one of these, I go to speedtest.net, I click speed test, I get those full numbers, no problem. In fact, I even pass them just by a little bit. Now, when I do the speed test on my Wi-Fi devices, like my iPhone and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, they do tend to vary. Now, looking at the numbers, we could see that the Pro 6 did a little bit better with the Wi-Fi 6 device, and the Pro 6C did a little bit better with the Wi-Fi 6C device. Now, to truly isolate the router by itself, what I did was I made my computer into a local speed test server, getting rid of my ISP and the public speed test server from the equation, 
which can vary at times. So this way I go from phone to router to computer in a single router configuration. And as you guys can see from the numbers, there's a huge difference in terms of gains in both the Pro 6 and the Pro 6C. However, the Pro 6C does have the advantage with the Wi-Fi 6C device because it does support that six gigahertz band. And it is far better, again, in the Wi-Fi 6C section with the Galaxy phone. Jumping to wired backhaul, that's when you have one node with ethernet hooked up to the other node and you can have a switch in between them and the same is true for the Pro 6C. In fact, technically, you can actually mix and match these because all Eros are supposed to be compatible with each other. However, for this test, I did not do that. So the Pro 6 was its own mesh system and the Pro 6C was its own mesh system. And for this test, I actually, if this was the one hooked up to my local speed test server acting as a single router, I actually did the test off the secondary one. So I went from, uh, the phone was close to this one and this one went to this one, then it went to the computer. So looking at the numbers, the Pro 6 got very similar numbers to the single router configuration, which is very good. The Pro 6E did a lot slower in the Wi-Fi 6E section compared to its single router configuration. But there is an asterisk here. Why is that? Well, the Pro 6E has one 2.5 gigabit port and one gigabit port. So if you're using your 2.5 gigabit port for your internet, then your wired backhaul is gonna go from the gigabit port to the other guy's 2.5 gigabit port if you want that. So it's gonna work the slower off the two ports, which means it's gonna work off the gigabit port, which is going to be slower, and that's why you get these speeds. However, if you have internet speeds, which in my case, this is true, of up to gigabit speeds, I can actually hook up my modem to the gigabit port of this and use the 2.5 gigabit port of this to go to the 2.5 gigabit, gigabit port of the other Eero Pro 6C. And I actually did this test and I got pretty much the same, very similar numbers to the single router configuration. So in theory, the Pro 6C can be faster for wired backhaul. So th that, one, there were, that was a lot of things to say to say that, but I wanted to explain it. Now getting into wireless backhaul, wireless backhaul is the same exact thing as wired backhaul, except you remove the ethernet cable between them. So if you have your main one hooked up to your modem via ethernet, the secondary one is, let's just say one or two rooms away, let's just, I don't know, 40 feet away or so, hooked up to power, and it wirelessly talks to this main one. And again, I did the speed test off the secondary one, which wirelessly jumped to this one, which went to my computer via ethernet as the local speed test server. And as you guys can see, both of these suffered quite a bit in terms of performance. The surprising thing was the Pro 6E was a bit more disappointing than what I was expecting. Range test time. Now range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, a lot of thick walls, a lot of the routers around, all of this stuff can hurt your range. At 20 feet away, Wi-Fi 6 was around the same, Wi-Fi 6C blew it away with the Pro 6C. Now you'll notice that 50 feet away, the Pro 6C speeds are very similar to the Pro 6 speeds. So that Wi-Fi 6C advantage that was there at 20 feet away is now gone. The reason for that is that the six gigahertz band, while it's very fast, has short range. So at 50 feet away, even my Wi-Fi 6C device is actually connecting to the five gigahertz band, which is just Wi-Fi 6, it's no longer Wi-Fi 6C. Therefore, you don't see that advantage. And moving down the line, the Pro 6 gets up to 250 feet, while the Pro 6C gets up to 320 feet away. So the Pro 6C, generally speaking, did better. I mean, there were bits and pieces where the Pro 6 actually did better. Now, to set this up, you use the Eero app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's very simple to use. You download it, it tells you how to connect it. What you need to do, super, super simple. It, it's designed to be simple and it hides a lot of advanced features. Well, it, I should say it hides a lot of features. So if you wanna start tweaking a lot of things, you do have to go into the advanced section. However, it doesn't have too many options. So it does let you tweak a few things, but not too many things. So if you're one of those guys that wants to tweak a lot of things, I suggest looking at ASUS. I would stay away from Eero. 
And as far as parental controls, like I mentioned earlier, you do need to sign up for a subscription to get that. And if you sign up, that's called Eero Secure. And they also have Eero Secure Plus, which has that plus VPN and a few other things. Now let's answer a few questions. If you have the Pro 6, is it worth getting the Pro 6e? In my opinion, no. There's not too much of a difference between these to justify getting this. However, the only reason I would get it is if I had internet speeds faster than gigabit or if I had a lot of six gigahertz devices, Wi-Fi 6E devices, which there aren't too many of those, or I wanted a, or I had internet speeds of up to gigabit and I wanted a faster network. Generally speaking, you know, which one of these would I get and why? Honestly, that's a tough question. There's not too much of a price difference between these unless it goes on sale, which Prime Day is coming up. So, you know, both of these might go on sale. So I would have to see the price difference to see if it's worth getting it or not. I think for the retail price, I probably would go with the Pro 6E over the Pro 6 just because it does have 6E and you know, more and more devices are gonna start coming out with 6E. But I mean, if there's too much of a price difference between them, I'd rather just get with the Pro 6. I have tested the Pro 6 for long term and this thing is super, super stable. So it's always been a good mesh system. Is it perfect? I would say no, but overall it's pretty good. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.